Well, thank you very much. This episode of Talk Flagler is brought to you by Xanadu Pet Care, a local professional dog walking and pet sitting service right here in Palm Coast and Flagler County. Xanadu Pet Care holds licenses with the City of Palm Coast, Flagler County, and the State of Florida to provide pet sitting and dog walking services, also holding insurance coverage from Pet Care Insurance. Striving to provide expert care for all pets from the domesticated to the exotic, call Xanadu today for all your pet needs. Visit xanadupets.com, X-A-N-A-D-U-P-E-T-S.com, or call 904-497-6970. Ask for Emma. Welcome to Talk Flagler, your look into local personalities, businesses, and everything west of the beach waves. I'm your guest host, Chris Gollin, filling in for Joey Santos-Jones, and on this episode, we are talking to three-fifths of the post-hardcore band Slaves, namely co-guitarists Felipe Sanchez and Weston Richmond, and bassist Colin Vieira. Slaves released their fourth album, To Better Days, back in August, and today they're here to talk about their new music, as well as some other pertinent topics. So I guess we can go around... Go around the table, start with Colin, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Colin Vieira, as you mentioned, play bass and slaves. Um, grew up in Palm Coast with my boy Felipe over here, um, <laughs> just, just stuck Weston in, and uh, yeah, doing this podcast now. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Felipe Sanchez, uh, very local, been here since 1998, uh, yeah, grew up here, went through, went through a school here, elementary, middle, and high school, started playing music around town, got involved in that scene, and uh, yeah, still here, still doing it. Hey guys, I'm Wes Richmond. I am new to the Flagler area, probably about like two or three months now. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm really enjoying it so far, so yeah. All right. Very nice. So to kick things off, I know this might be a bit more of a Felipe and Colin question because this is going back, but tell me how you guys got into music here in Palm Coast. Well, uh, back then, what, what year was that? I guess in 2000, when oh, we started in 2003, yeah, 2004, there was really nothing to do in Palm Coast. So there still think, isn't. Yeah, there still, <laughs> there still isn't too much, but, uh, I think uh, our group of friends just decided, I think we were all like skateboarding at the time and um, not me, maybe not you, but <laughs> yeah. I was filming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few of us were skateboarding at the time and I, I think it just like kind of just gradually went to like, oh, let's buy instruments and be in a band and we all just like bought random instruments and some some of us like like Carson, he bought a guitar first and he's yeah. like a drummer that, um, you know, really a drummer and from Palm Coast that uh, I think we all just kind of like went on a limb and just like, all right. For Chris, this Christmas, I'm going to get an instrument and started playing them. And uh, just, yeah, for them, we all had little, like, friend friend groups. that It was all kind of, like, one big friend group, but, like, mm-hmm. and sectioned off by the sections <laughs> in Palm Coast. And, uh, yeah, we just start just, off, just that's just what we did from in high school, from pretty much from, like, middle school on. So, wait, were you guys in a band together before Slaves? No, never the- together. We, we, were in a, we were in bands that played together often. Yeah. And like had mutual members in and out of them and stuff like that. Okay. All right. And uh, how'd you get going, Wes? So you grew up in Salt Lake City? Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, my cousin got like a, a bass guitar for Christmas one year or something. And that made me interested. So my aunt gave me an acoustic guitar. And my cousin told me I would never be as good at <laughs> guitar as him. So that really <laughs> drove me. And that just pushed me forward. And then been in countless local bands out of there and a couple more established bands out of there, but okay. Oh, very nice. So, all right. That being how you guys got started, how did slaves start? How did it start? Cause I know, I think you've been in slaves the longest, longest, right, Colin? Yeah. So how did slaves get started? And then how did each of you guys individually get into the band? So yeah, slaves was a thing that kind of started with <clears throat> around our old singer, Johnny, um, uh, at the time he, or b- before slaves was, was, I think it was uh, Johnny was in a couple bands, one dance guy would dance and another Amorosa. And uh, at the time Slave started, he he was out of those bands for a period of time. And I think his 
manager and him just wanted to form a band and get back into get him back into like that kind of the rock world he was doing a lot of r&b stuff at the time mm -hmm. so um so it was just kind of like all right i'm gonna start a band and pick a couple people to play do you want to you want to play in it type of thing uh me and john john was actually living with me at the time okay. um in sacramento yeah so uh yeah so yeah that's how it started he he, he kind of handpicked like five members um actually it was like somewhere between like six and seven that were at first and then it's kind of like got narrowed down um mm -hmm. and uh yeah so it was just uh kind of just started out pretty unorganically because you know it wasn't just like a group of friends knew each other playing you know like as we mentioned earlier like our high school days and stuff like that it was a uh, kind of like an inorganic way of the start a band but yeah throughout the years we've acquired different members and uh weston and Felipe being one of them I don't know if you guys want to share your story, how, how you got in the band. Yeah. Um, so right around 2017 uh, is when they the band started needing a guitar player because the current guitar player, Alex, had left. And then um, they had a couple tours coming up and stuff like that. So I had written a couple of songs uh, just on my own here and there and I had sent them out to Colin and uh so the guys were like familiar with like how I played and stuff like that as well as like having known him previously Colin growing up with him and Weston just hanging out with him like here and there when he would come and visit Colin in Florida um here at Flagler and so when the time came to like go meet up with them uh I I took the offer and went and met up and been playing with them ever since oh, very nice Wes uh, for me, I joined in like March of 2015, and uh, they they had another like previously hired guitar player on the road with them that didn't work out. That ended up having to fly home, and I had known Alex, the old guitar player, uh, grew up with him and stuff. So he brought me on board, and basically been here since then. So okay, very cool, very cool. So um, when when Slave started out, um, it being initially um johnny johnny craig recruiting you at that point he was you know definitely a famous name was that like um was that kind of like your first brush with a band that was destined to be totally. like a pretty huge deal yeah before so when the band first got announced um I, I guess when johnny uh put on social media about the band um and some press started picking it up it was uh my name was involved and it was definitely i i remember thinking it was definitely it wasn't even having written a song yet. It was definitely the biggest band I've ever been in, for sure, by far. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like the, that goes with the kind of inorganic part of the whole thing, too, because, you know, usually you work your way up to that and you, you know, and we've all individually put in our own, you know, put in our, paid our dues and been doing this for a long time and worked real hard at this. But as a band itself, it kind of like we, I think the first tour was Australia. So it was like mm -hmm. we already were able to do stuff like that because of Johnny's name. Okay. So yeah, that, but it, that also goes, you know, hand in hand with how inorganic the, the start of the band was. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I prob that probably reflects in some of the troubles the band went through in the early phases, for sure, too. Yeah. Now, um, Felipe, you were in a band called Broadway before this with um, Sean Connors, who is a great dude. Mm -hmm. And um, Misha Collins is John's name, right? I've never met him. Misha, Singer? Misha Camacho. Camacho. I don't know where yeah. I got Collins from. But um, this Colin, <laughs> maybe that yeah, could yeah. be that could be it's fresh on the brain. It's just in my head. But <laughs> um, so you were in Broadway for a little bit before that. Yeah. So how does how does your time in Broadway compare to your time in Slaves? Uh, with Broadway, um, it was just kind of like guys that I had grown up with because they were from Orlando. So I was well aware of like the members that were there previously. I was already friends with them. I was familiar with their music. I had seen them play live. We had played a bunch of shows together. So then when their previous guitar player, um, who's a buddy, he left for another band. Um, he kind of like recommended me and uh, kind of like the same thing. It was just like, a, like knowing somebody that's, in the position to maybe help you out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I got in there and uh, it was very similar in the sense that like, we all got, got along very well. Um, it was different in the sense that like, I had known them for a while because when I first got into this band, I knew Weston a bit 
from hanging out with him. Um, but that was maybe like less than 10 times, you know? I, I knew Colin because we were from the same town, but anybody else that was brought into the picture was like completely brand new to me. Mm. And that was um, the guitarist and she's introduced you. That was a uh, Jack Fowler, right? Yes. From Sleeping with Sirens for our listeners. He left to join Sleeping with Sirens. And oh, okay. And that's how he was like, hey man, maybe you should think about doing this. And I was like, I, yeah, I'm, I think it sounds good. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. how that happened. Yeah, hey, I was a Broadway fan too. Yeah. And um, so now, and we touched on Johnny Cray being the original singer. And as some of our listeners would know, he no longer is. Now we have Matt McAndrew in Slaves. And Matt McAndrew is just nuts. I mean, oh my gosh. The guy, the guy, (laughs) the guy, I mean, I'll just say it got absolutely robbed of winning the voice. (laughs) He was, he was just insane on that show. And I think, I know... Felipe, you told me quite a bit about it because, and for our listeners, me and Felipe have been tight for like, I don't know, the better part of 10 years now. And so Matt kind of came in pretty suddenly, but from, I mean, I watched some YouTube clips of those shows, people with their cell phones. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was kind of killing it right off the bat. He's a pro. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He is absolutely insane. But didn't you say he was like in the beginning, like, because he wasn't familiar with Slaves Mm -hmm. when he hopped on that tour. Wasn't he like looking at lyrics on his phone? Yeah. 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 He didn't even know we existed as a band. If you look, there's some clips that you can listen to now. Sorry to cut you off, but I'm um, <laughs> really excited. Uh, there's some, yeah, there's some clips you could watch right now that it's like the melodies are just completely kind of like off and, um, <laughs> and it's like on key, but they're on key, melodies, but, yeah. but like making up words <laughs> that like are completely not the part of the song and like the, me- the, the way he sang certain songs for the first couple of shows. Um, but yeah, with that being said, give, give, giving the dude credit because I wouldn't come nowhere, nowhere near even, even if somebody was like, hey, here, go on this plane ride to Europe and just listen to these songs and be able to like sing them, like word them back to me. Never mind perform them on a stage. I wouldn't be able to learn 10 songs and, no way. and remember those lyrics. So he did a really good job. And then on top of that, uh, the challenge of being able to sing those songs because as we know, Johnny Johnny's pretty a pretty unique singer and not a lot of people did do what he does mm-hmm. um or even yeah so it was, I, I was very we were very happy with matt first the first even when we heard him warming up we were like okay that's, we're gonna be fine <laughs> I remember, oh, just looked at each other and just smiled. We're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember first seeing the YouTube clip, the cell phone clip of Matt singing I'd Rather See Your Star Explode, which is arguably your guy's most iconic song. Mm-hmm. And I remember I'd been accustomed to Johnny's version, his just this raspy yeah. voice, these little like runs and the transitions as he's singing it. And then Matt came in with this much like smoother voice. It's not quite as, I guess, pained. Yeah, it's not paint in a good way. Yeah. But it, it was a very different approach. But I remember hearing that and just thinking it's like this is so different, but it somehow s- serves the song so well. Yeah. And I remember that at yeah. that point I was rooting, it's like I really hope they make him full time. <laughs> two uh two very different types of singers, but still very, very talented. Both yeah. Them. And I know the the Matt versus Johnny comparison is done to death. No one wants to hear about that anymore. But it's like, yeah, I it's mean, they're both good singers, but such different styles, you know? Matt's yeah. very versatile. Like yeah, Johnny's shot right. is very like true Johnny sound. Matt can sound like anybody he really wants to. For sure. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I remember I looked him up on that initial voice blind audition after I heard he was joining your band. And I mean, I had heard him on that clip singing this hard rock music. And then I heard him singing A Thousand Years by Christina Perry. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just this whole completely other other approach and he looked completely different too right mm-hmm. like now he has that like polished hairstyle yeah he's dude. a slick looking dude back then he kind of had the mop top going on well dude just to give you a little insight he didn't even like listen to hard rock music at all before being introduced to us really like he knew like you know the big big bands like the stadium bands bringing the horizon like um he was a big Radiohead fan but he was definitely more like on um, singer songwriter James Taylor, Bob yeah, Taylor. the like, softer side of things, and oh, then man. he got linked up with us, and then he had like this whole world to discover, and mm-hmm. yeah, man, that's <laughs> so really like his first brush with like having to sing those types of songs and use his voice in that way has been with us. But then you guys also, and that's absolutely true. And then you guys also have one of the songs on the new album is Footprints. Yes, that has 
that was one of the ones I instantly heard and loved. And it's funny because for the listeners, I'm a singer songwriter myself, a bit of an acoustic artist. And it's like, I, I had to make a joke when I first heard Footprints is like, Matt is better at writing my songs than I am. <laughs> Cause that, kind of, that, that, and that sounded like the kind of song I would put out, but just so much better. Dude. And he's, he, the guy's good, man. He, um, what was the songwriting breakdown on the album? I know a lot of times people expect the vocalist to do a lot of the lyrics, but I mean, from what I've understood, it was a very collaborative process with all five of you guys. Vocal, yeah. vocal wise and lyric wise, it was Matt did ninety percent. Ninety percent of it was Matt. Yeah. There, there, um, there'd be times where our producer would uh, come in, like if Matt was for, like, we did this all in six weeks, so. Um, and it was actually 14 songs. Was it 14 or we dropped? Or 15? Yeah. Was it 15? Yeah, it was like 14 or 15 that we had written. Yeah, that we had written. Um, so, so had written and recorded in six weeks. So it was like a kind of a time crunch. So in the times where Matt, there, there was like Matt, you know, Matt was drawing a blank on some like a chorus, chorus idea or a verse idea. Either the producer, Jimmy, our producer, would come in and have, like give some suggestions or you would, the last, the next step up would be like, all right, man, what, what, what are you feeling? And we, we come in and chime in, chime in on some things on this record as well. So it was collaborative, but melodies and lyrics, I got you, Matt did most 90% of that on his own. I feel like this album was everybody handled their area. But very also, well, like, but everybody never, saw everything too. It like, was never out of the question if you were stuck on something to like reach out to anybody totally. and be like, hey, I, can you maybe like just kind of. And see what see what kind of vibe where we can reach on this, and then yeah, everybody had like their job, very their their own specific job, but everybody was kind of like just overseeing all of it too, and mm-hmm. being yeah. like, oh yeah, that's cool. No, maybe we were all in the like, same room as everything was going down. So. And speaking of which, you know, bringing up the new member in Matt, we also got to bring up the man Zach Baker, yeah, Zach, yeah. For real. Yeah. the drummer, yeah. old laddie, the, the drummer who I'm six three and he towers over me. Yeah. He's a tall boy. I mean, six foot seven. How old are you now? Twenty-two. Okay. He's, when do you turn twenty-three? January. He, dude, he's just a couple months before you. He's older yeah, than me. He just he, barely turned. He just tw- he just turned twenty-three. So. Yeah, I knew he was like around our age because um, yeah, yeah, like around the time I went to the Ocala show. Yeah. And oh my god, that was an amazing show. That was a blast. Dude. I went, yeah, I went and saw the Slaves guys in Ocala, and I made sure to grab a spot right in front of Felipe <laughs> so I could try and make him break all show. <laughs> but Felipe is an incredible professional, and he kept a straight face for most of it. I think he just didn't look at me. You got me a couple times. You just got to sell it. I think I definitely did. <laughs> I think I definitely did. But um, yep, yeah, so there's that. And um, what would you guys say are some of the big influences on this album because i know mm-hmm. there's a totally new set of influences coming in with matt like see so him For listening sure. to radiohead yeah. i know he did a Coldplay song a hosier song on the voice so who would you guys name as some of the big influences for two better days i don't know because i mean it, it's hard to say it's it's like easier to say i guess who we were listening to at that time because i i, I guess like Bands influence our, each uh, our styles individually. Like different bands will, for us, all you know, we all have our individual bands that we that like kind of make up our own styles. But for this album particularly, I don't know what were we were listening to. Uh, Bring Me's latest record, oh, Bring Me the Horizon's latest record was huge. Yeah, that was uh, we were at that time. A they lot. did a lot of cool stuff, like regarding the production. Yeah, production wise, um, I think that was like an influence on this album, yeah. probably. Honestly, like. There, there might have been a handful of bands that like influenced the whole record process, but I feel like it was more of like circumstances, at least yeah. for me, yeah. that influenced everything. Like, I mean, like there was just so much uncertainty around everything, and like it was just more about like, all right, well, it's time to kind of put up or shut up. So like, put your all into these songs and put your all into this writing and this project, and just be present. And it's like, let's take the riffs that we've saved for like two years yeah. because we know they're perfect and we haven't been able to put them out to the world the way we can hear them in our heads. Let's take them and do it with this one. And I think it, it showed off. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It was definitely more like urgent to like put out something good. And we just, we were lucky enough to lock in. Yeah. I know you guys also, you covered, I think it was I Fall Apart by Post Malone. We did. In the yeah. live shows. It was a little fun thing. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. I think you guys got it. Like Matt broke out the acoustic. When did you guys do Down for the Ride yep. and I Fall Apart? Is that a little yeah. acoustic block? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Fall Apart is me with him singing, and then he 
bust out the acoustic to like break it down even more. It's like a two step breakdown. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. He he brings down the house every night. That's all said. Oh my gosh, he really really does. I yeah. I can't recall having heard a hard rock band with a singer that came out quite that way. Right, right. And he's versatile. I mean, it worked tremendously. I mean, there was like a lot of I know a lot of Slaves fans were maybe apprehensive when Heavier was coming up, the yeah. debut single or the, the first single from the album. And it was a pr- it pretty much, it blew me away. I know it blew most, most people away how amazing Matt sounded on that first single because, I mean, this had been a guy who not that long ago was called in bottom of the ninth mm-hmm. to come in on a tour. And then this is how he sounded meshing with the band on a whole project. That was, that was magical for me to hear because so I, I i love every single song on the album thanks so that song yeah, here was actually you. recorded so that was the only song that was recorded before we recorded the rest of the album we recorded that song right when he was doing the australia tour with us so after right after he um filled in for johnny in the europe tour we, we like i think we had a week or two off and then we went straight to australia okay and um and after our australia tour we had like four days off so we recorded that song there and that was like six months before we recorded the album i believe okay around six or maybe like four or five months before the we recorded the album so that was like yeah that that was kind of when we knew like so we knew early on before we, before we even went in to record this album that like matt was going to gel with us and like in the studio and write well with us and that we can write and us you know we can keep our slave sound with matt and have him add to it so we knew going into the album like it was it was a little bit more reassuring had recording, you know, having recording that song. Oh, nice. Do you guys have uh, favorite songs on the album? Yeah, uh, I like "Wasting My Youth" a lot. I love "Wasting My Youth." I feel like uh, that one when we were working on it wasn't exactly like I just couldn't see like the bigger picture. I like I I knew I liked how it sounded, but it wasn't in the, in the running for my favorite song or anything. But then slowly but surely, as everything got added to it, uh, I sort of like kind of get in the bigger picture, and I was like, "This is this song's gonna hit," and it did. And yeah, I it definitely did. I love that song. Yeah, like cursed. Which one? Cursed, probably. Cursed. That is a good one. That kind of has like, um, I think like a bit, almost like a U two ish guitar. Uh, it's more of like poppy. It's like a pop yeah. song for us. It's like uh, more of yeah. the uh, poppy side for us. So yeah, almost like I don't want to say pop punk. That's not the right. No, not pop. No, that would be, I think that the closer we get to pop punk would be, uh, well, you're very close, but Secrets, Secrets, yeah. Secrets, Yeah, yeah, dude. Don't don't forget that. Yeah, Yeah. Secrets are uh, footprints for me, probably. Yeah. Now, wait, who plays what on Footprints? Because I know that's much more stripped down. Is everyone still on that song? Uh, I don't think there's any real bass on there, actually. I think that was a program, I believe. It's just mostly me and Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Weston's holding it down on the acoustic, and then I, are, are Zach's toms real? I know there's there's yeah. percussion in that. He, might, he, he did some percussion, but like as far as like a full-blown band song, I, I wouldn't consider it that. Okay. I know mine. Mine is definitely Barry Lai. From Barry Lai. I, 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 I was going to say that one, too. That's, that's, the more, that's the one I like that's a rock song on the yeah. rock album. Oh, Here's it's more. That was Weston's like, baby. It's just front to yeah. back, just wall to wall, just energy doesn't let you down it just keeps you up yeah there. yeah and uh, oh my gosh and of course zach is amazing on that but it's like to say zach is amazing on it that doesn't narrow it down yeah, yeah. zach just killed everything i remember i first really noticed him on talk to a friend on like oh, the yeah. breakdown yeah, of that song when that came out he is just in his element there he's groovy man he really is oh my god he is just like i don't know how his arms don't get tired with how much energy he, he plays a lot he'll yeah. sit there and play like I don't know how many hours today. Just locked himself in his little studio. It's gotta yeah. be like four hours. Yeah, he, he treats it like a like his training for the Olympics. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a very non-drummer thing of me to say. It's like, do your arms get tired? <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm sure they do, though. Oh my god! Yeah, he is. Keeps him in shape, probably. Absolutely insane. Yeah, he's nuts. Man. So in the recording process, let's see. You guys, you say you recorded it mostly in te- Texas? No. Not All not right, you but. I think you said you flew to Texas at one point and then like maybe connected. I just remember you mentioning you were going to Texas at one point. Uh, when you joined the band? Yeah, not for the album. I maybe flew I'm... to Texas to join the band. That was like our base for a little bit. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe they had a layover in Texas? I don't know. I don't know. Either way, been. no part of this album took place in Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was all in Chicago. I didn't think so. <laughs> but, um, well, yes, I did, but I'm going to say I didn't think so. <laughs> but, so most of it was recorded in Chicago. All of it was. So, um, yeah. did, did the songs come in any clusters? Did not even get written, like, the same day or anything? Uh, sometimes. I mean, like, every song is different, you know? Mm-hmm. It, just energy changes, you know, you're like, because sometimes you have creative ideas, sometimes you don't. But mm-hmm. yeah, when we're really on on uh, on the ball, I would say like maybe maybe one or two a day. Yeah. Wow! And then like we had one song that took like a week to write, dude. so we'd like <laughs> get there every day and try and write on that one. And realize we're not getting anywhere, so yeah. we just write a couple other songs. And yeah, finally it came we, together. I think we got to a point where it was like. Yeah. If we were work, like there was like a threshold. If we crossed it, we were like, all right, we're spinning our tires. We're wasting time. Let's move on to something else because yeah. we knew we only had the six weeks to do it. Right. So let's talk about since the pandemic. Obviously, no live shows has got to be the worst part of it. But it's not ideal. I have seen I've seen Felipe and Colin. I've seen you guys hop on Instagram live a couple of times. What What can you even do as a band to try and stay? stay in the spotlight during the pandemic. Stream. Hop on Instagram yeah. Live. No, I'm sure. I mean, you can, uh, <laughs> I mean there, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, yeah, but they're just uh, write music. We're writing music. Uh, just, try, just just trying to stay busy. Um, as far as keeping your name it's in the spotlight, it's just hard. I guess putting out music would be doing that, but mm-hmm. uh, we're doing live stream shows that I think that would, if this continues on, I think that's going to be a lot bigger of a thing, live stream shows. Probably. So, um, did you just confirm there is new music in development? We're, we're, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Yeah, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, that was the whole point of like getting in this house together and building a studio. Is we're, we're going to record the next album probably in that studio, and, uh, okay. and we're going to write the whole thing there probably. So. Oh, all right, very nice. So, another one of the big things you guys have been in the news for lately is the decision to have Two Better Days be the final album under the name Slaves. So I don't know, this is shifting like a bit of a heavier topic. No pun, <laughs> no pun intended. It's all good. But, um, nice. but uh, I was wondering if you guys could speak to that decision and what went into that. And if you want to give us the exclusive on the new name, you're more than welcome. Because mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think anyone knows yet. <laughs> you're right. No, you know, yeah. Yeah. Not even us. <laughs> I've guessed a few times. Mm-hmm. I've asked Felipe. It's like, hey, is it this? Yeah, we really haven't. We haven't even completely picked one for sure yet. So we're playing this one close to the chest, man. Ooh. It was a sensitive issue. Um, as far as like, you know, if you let the cat out of the bag, then it's like, you know, you just gotta plan these things out correctly. And yeah, yeah. I think we're, we're all like thinking about it. We we no one's ever really liked the name. I think the only person that's ever liked the name of the band is Ty, the guy, our old drummer who made the name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I think uh, just. It, it's it's never made it's it's never really made any of us feel the most comfortable with it. It was like and, and then it got to the point after so much has happened with our band after we got Matt and the, uh, our new singer we put uh, we, you know we worked so hard on this album. It got to the point where like that was literally the only thing that we just really didn't like about it. We we like loved everything about the band and like where we were, uh, who we were as people, who we were as a band, an album that we just wrote, you know how the how the singles were going and it was just. Uh, it just turned to be a thing where it's like the uh, the only the only like black cloud above us right now. Just no pun intended, because that's the album cover. <laughs> uh, um, is is like the only thing kind of like way to sound is, is the band name, and the only thing that we feel now because we went through like a rebrand and we went through you know I think people started to see that, and it's just like it just got to the point where I think it's like the only thing that doesn't really represent us as a band is the band name now. So and what was the what was the origin of the name originally? What what did it it was uh, the like, slaves to your addiction, slaves to your demons, your inner demons, the uh, you know the, the nasty voices in your head, and, and um, you know just obviously our old singer had struggled with a lot of uh, drug addiction, so uh, that was really the basis of the, the name slaves. Mm-hmm. And um, so you think it might be an obvious question, but you think like the recent events might have accelerated the process yeah, well, of getting some, away from that name for sure. And it was something that we probably we've had like it's something we've talked about for years, but uh, we we like really had like serious discussions about okay we're actually like probably going to do this and then oh, we're actually going to definitely gonna do this it was like talks like that for probably like nine months or no over a year maybe now well when, when it matched it's pretty much ever since about a year and a half dude yeah probably like yeah. A, we, we had it was probably like serious talks for about a year 
like that we were going to change it how are we going to do it Ooh, what wow. name should we do and then yeah the, the recent events was like kind of like made things were uh made, made things we, we just wanted to say something before you know before um we got interviewed and it was we didn't want to put it out in like an interview we wanted to like reach our fans directly and, and, and tell it to them first before you know we were, we were about to do a bunch of press about our album people were gonna it was something that we wanted to say and we, we we felt like we'd have to make it official before we actually said it like in interviews and stuff like that right no yeah that's understandable and mm-hmm. i won't i won't bring up any of my guesses because i know i mean i don't want to i don't want to accidentally get it God, right give me a couple guesses my, we, we won't say if you got it right now we oh can't. man i definitely came up with two better days would make sense i okay. feel like that's my best guess okay. Okay. maybe slvs okay oh. But, but then again, it'd be pronounced the same way. So that's not really right, progress. Right, right. My favorite is the Felipe Sanchez Quintet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did throw that out to them. I think that has the yeah. most. I, they, they tell me they're thinking yeah, about that, it. That one's in the, in the right. It's, it's, it's in there. there. I mean, I, 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 the name in the hat. I made a mock up with the shirt because I have two slaves t shirts and I forgot to wear one of them today. <laughs> like I was going to. I like the dark green polo, man. Oh, nice. thank you. I, nice yeah, look. I had something else to do earlier today. I had to look all official for that. Oh. But, um, yeah, it's like I once I came up with that, I took a picture of my slaves t shirt and I, I just pho- photographed that name over it. Oh, and yeah. I think I think it has a lot a lot of potential. And There's something there. What the Felipe one? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I I mean yeah, You're it's like not, talking me into it. Talking <laughs> me into it. I went in that little Instagram um like story, I guess a little booth, and I like typed that out and just caption it, put it right over right. slaves. And listen, I'm just saying, if that gets picked as the original name, we'll give you credit. You know where you heard it first, we'll give you credit. right? Oh, for sure. Here, absolutely. Boom. Get so, um, so oh my gosh. So, um, next year, I think we're saying next year is when the vaccine is supposedly going to become widely available. Fingers crossed. And that would be, I guess, when Felipe Nanton would. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't hear what that was. And I don't know, hopefully there's going to be some shows starting back up at that point. But I am stoked to see you guys live again. Dude, we're stoked to play live. There's only there's yeah. a few there's a few bands that I will see as many times as they come to town. Paramore, Pearl Jam, Jason Isbell in the 400 unit, and Slaves. Nice. Those might be the four. <laughs> Thanks. That's a good group Thanks, to be man. in. I will always see those as many times as they come to town. Well, this is we're dying to play out, man. We yeah. felt good doing our live stream show. It felt good like practicing, and we felt good about the songs when we, when we were practicing, and it was fun playing the new songs. So, oh, totally excited to get out there. And one place in festivals with the songs and oh yeah, all that stuff. I hope it does go better for me than the last one because there was a funny story at the Ocala show. So, I I was there with my friend Sarah. Hey Sarah, hope you're listening to this. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, we up, we met up with the guys at um, at a Wawa. It's like we we just me and Sarah parked there in Ocala just like to walk over to the venue, and you all just happened to be in there. I think Felipe, Zach, and Matt. Yeah, we were hungry. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and so first when I first met you, all I started whistling heavier, and I think Zach picked up on it. I was like two feet behind Felipe, yeah, yeah. whistling heavier, and he didn't get it. <laughs> Which, oh, also that reminds me, I'm going to sidetrack myself. I used to work in a racetrack station for about six months last year. And one day, Mr. Colin Vieira walked in. Mm-hmm. And I, in, at this job, I had my Bluetooth speaker going. <laughs> and um, I got to play my own music. You know the story, right? I do. You texted me that. And, um, I didn't realize it either. Huh? Did I realize it? I don't know. Because, you know, what happened was, you. I was waiting for you to come into the checkout line because you can't hear my speaker from the back of the store or else it'd be blaring. Mm. And so I was waiting for you to come to the checkout line. I had, I think, Star Exploder Heavier queued up. Mm. Just, because I don't know if you would have recognized me at that point in time. I, if we'd met in well, like met, months. Uh, but I, well, I remember meeting you at, at the racetrack. I, I don't know if it's this time. I don't know. I don't, know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't remember. I remember. This was premeditated. I, I thought, I don't know. I thought I was going to get one over on you. Oh, I had it ready to go and I played. It was heavier because the intro was a little quiet for a few seconds. Mm. And I started playing it, and you just walked out the door. Really? Didn't buy anything. This man had places really? to be, bro. I he, had to go. he just looked around and left, and I was like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> <laughs> that that point zero 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 seven cents on Spotify I've for nothing. Oh uh, <laughs> man, I was I was salty about that for a few days. I had to text Felipe. Yeah. I had to be like, "Your bandmate just." 
I was like, dude, I apologize for him. He's so rude. As soon as he's concluded his business, he's out the door. <laughs> he didn't buy anything. But no, getting back to the Ocala show, um, we were walking over to the venue and I was talking with Matt. And at this point, Matt is still like a celebrity to me. So I'm like, this is like, like the starstruck, detailed conversation I'm having with him. And we get over to the venue and we're hanging out outside of it in the parking lot. And I was standing there talking to him. And like not making a fool of myself so far in front of this person who to me is a celebrity. I'm, I'm seeming like a normal person. He's a pretty easy person. To and talk then, to. oh God, you're standing next to this gray Dodge Charger or Challenger or something, sports car. All I did, I didn't lean on it. I just put mm, my hand no. on it, barely even touched it. The and the alarm. car alarm started going oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting here embarrassing everyone around me. And this. The, the owner came out and he was cool with it because oh, yeah. he, 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 I didn't he sit did. on it or anything yeah, right. and do anything disrespectful, but it's like, I was doing so well that was pretty funny. up until that point. Yeah. Matt would probably know that was pretty funny. Though. Yeah. Matt probably laughed about it. It was objectively pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I was, I was the butt of that, that joke, but it was only a matter of time until I did something like that. Let's face it. <laughs> I mean, just before that, I think I had gotten a can of Pringles when we got gas on the way there and I had spilled that all over my car. We'll be part of the law. Oh, you yeah. already knew what kind of night you were in for. I mean, it got better when you guys started playing. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Which that was a that was like four opening acts that night. Yeah, so, typically yeah. like five bands or something. That was a night. And I a couple of local bands, I think. Um, then there was that band Fame on Fire. They're from South Florida. Or Tampa. Are they from Tampa? Yeah, shout out. They're good dudes. Someone did a Lincoln Bar cover. I think that might have been. That was probably Fame on Fire. I have oh I have a sticker at one of them still in my wallet. I think it's one of them. I'm gonna make a lot of chair rustling, a lot of noise rustling this chair. <laughs> I'll tell you the name of one of them if I still have this. Did I take it out? I took it out. Yeah. We'll edit that out of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that little false alarm. <laughs> but no, that was that was still that night was a ton of fun. Even though I had to get up at like six in the morning the next day for work. Yeah, you did that pretty pretty Weird. quickly after. Once you got, I mean, once you guys played, I had to go. Yeah, no, I get it. But no, thanks for coming out, though, man. I know that's a ways, and it was it was definitely it was good to see you out there. It was a blast. And speaking of tours, that there was that legendary photo because uh, you guys did Australia. You already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. You guys did Australia, and you did the koala thing. Mm-hmm. And Felipe made the critical mistake of posting a picture of him holding a koala. I wasn't on not social post media it. I'm holding a koala. No, you got to post it. But then Doug Reed also had to do it. He ended up doing yes which was so very, we had very photoshoppable we made it we made it into a prom photo they were both wearing tuxes mm. implying it was a boy koala <laughs> and oh my god it you should have posted that to that photoshop battle subreddit we definitely I, I feel like it somehow probably got on there it I needs to be i didn't do it that was an amazing photo there was so much joy in your face you're holding the koala up to the camera that, that joy was genuine too i was so happy <laughs> I that, really soft, yeah. that is the next Slaves album cover, right? Felipe holding the koala. At the very least, the back cover, man. I don't oh, know. It, it needs to be. Do, if do, we, if do we still, go to Australia again before we release another album, I'll, we'll have a full-on photo shoot. Do people still do album booklets through like the CD case? Uh, yeah, it's still a thing. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's where you spend. Yeah. How much that's they where you spend on the manufacturer. That's where you put it. I didn't. Do, is is two better days out on CD? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, is, that, is that on everything? Is that on vinyl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I need to get a record player because I own vinyls. I have the vinyl, I don't even have a record player. Oh, man. I got a record player. I don't have the vinyl. Oh, <laughs> man. We should combine forces. We just live across the hall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saw that in the background of your Instagram story the other day, that like golden record up on the wall. I saw that. I wish it was an actual golden record. But yeah, no, I'm just kind of like, that's like getting the room together at the house and stuff. And those are definitely two things that I'm proud to be involved in at all, for sure. Yeah. Um, so. so it was definitely looking forward to many more, man, for sure. And but so, yeah, it's available on everything. It is, yes, it is. I should I should help these guys pitch the album. It's available on Spotify, yeah. Apple Music, everywhere there's music. Uh YouTube. You can pirate it, but please don't. <laughs> um title. No one uses title, right? I don't know no, one person only that uses sorry, title. Matt. Matt what? does? Matt has Apple, Spotify, Title. Why does he have all of them? <laughs> <laughs> what? Does he pay for all of them? He's, he's that type of dude, though, man. That's that's a band like, has a Spotify account. 
together. And so it was like a family plan for Spotify. So that, that's why I have Spotify. That's why I have Spotify. I that's have, all I have. Oh, actually, I, I like Spotify, Spotify now. now. I only have the, I had Spotify before, but then we got the family thing, and I was like, no. Yeah. The man pays for this. I need to cancel my app. Nice. So I I'm just like, pay for it. <laughs> right, dude. I have Matt's that. on another level. We just got all of them, huh? And Tidal is like 20 something bucks a month, isn't it? Why? Because it like, doesn't convert the file to. Oh, uh, it's like supposed to be the truest version yeah. of the record? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's actually worth it. That's a good know. question. Most people would never know. No way. 99.9%. Right. Or, yeah. Maybe to like the train you. This is like these That's wine that. testing people that drink wine and it's like, and then they can just like tell what's in the ingredients, yeah. but for music. But I feel like a, even like 50% of those people are like just lying. They're no, like, absolutely. Some so um, almond and Twizzlers, like no, bro. You don't, it all tastes the same. I, I fully agree. That's yeah. a scam. <laughs> Really. I think they. I think I read somewhere they did like a blind taste test, with like really cheap wine and really expensive wine, and they couldn't really tell which was. I'm saying, dude, they're just being snobby. For I sure. think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this turned into a dis a dis take on the wine people. No, 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 no. <laughs> Enjoy your wine. If you're drinking wine, yeah, whatever. Expensive, cheap. I guess it's all the same. I guess. <laughs> but uh, in any case, that brings us to tell us about some of some of what's ahead for slaves when. I know it's not like I can say, like, when's your next tour? I can't. Oh, man. But we kind of touched on it. You guys have a home studio. When when are Matt and Zach flying in? When is it going to start happening? Zach will be here in a few days. Zach's coming mm-hmm. in Tuesday. He's staying for two weeks. I think he's just, like, checking out the place and see if he wants to, like, actually move down here. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So. Definitely. Pressure's on, Matt. Pressure's on. Hey, yeah, yeah, right? And that's never going to move here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's more than welcome if he wants to. Um, but, yeah, just writing the next record is what's going on for us we might be depending on how long we're able to tour for i think we might have set up another live stream show um what else what else is store honestly just trying to stay proactive uh so yeah a lot of writing a lot of recording uh a lot of co-writing with other people Ooh. um as far as like for their music you know we want to get into like maybe writing with other artists to help them out type of thing being that we're going to have the means to record right at our house anyways. Um, aside from that, yeah, set up maybe another live stream, um, try and get uh, some some sort of interaction with the fans going, a lot more content just to keep that like familiarity up. Yeah, I don't know. Anything you want to add? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all we can do right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, anything and everything that doesn't involve being being uh, around a large number of people. Yeah, I guess so. I hope when Zach comes down, he has more room to sleep in that van, though. That I've seen photos of this boy. in the touring <laughs> van. I, I don't know how this. What is he? Six seven? He's six seven. Yeah, he's six seven. Yeah. And it's like, how, what does he do? Dude, he just kind of curls up. I guess. <laughs> in the touring van, he makes it happen. Yeah. I don't know how he does. I never asked him. I can't even how like. Do you make that yeah, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot comfortably fly coach. Yeah, I know, and I, right. he's gonna back on flights is the worst thing. Dude, he, oh, yeah, his legs are back on flights. Oh, yeah, but it's he, like he has to make sure he gets an aisle seat so he can stick his leg <laughs> or get him like an exit row because they give you like oh, six more rows or just a couple more. But that it's is too relatable. It is not uncommon for like whatever vehicle we get for a tour for his feet to be sticking out of it. <laughs> Every any vehicle, it doesn't matter. Punch out the back windows, your drive. Oh yeah. Well, we got this. Uh, this, I guess it was kind of like a bus. It was a bit. Uh, they call it a bandwagon, and it's basically just like this big box truck that they converted on the inside with six beds in the back. So Whoa. you not beds like. I wish they would have full beds. Yeah, like bunks. Like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like there's no like opening on the ends of those. So Zach just every single night had to like, <laughs> he was forced to just like make it to an L or like a sitting position. Oh, and no. You're walking by on a size 15. Just yeah. Right your face. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. His poor back. Oh, yeah. I feel terrible for I him. I feel, you know what? He's definitely. He's young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He bounces yeah. back, and yeah, I, I give him a lot of credit for sure. Oh God. I mean, you guys from that in that one band photo, how many feet back did he have to stand? He has to stand back a couple. Because there's like the photo of the five of them yeah. standing, you know, in formation, which I think is on the album cover. Yes. And Zach's head is level 
<laughs> with the other people and i'm just looking at this like this is some trickery it's, this yeah. is some optical illusions, chicanery yeah. going on here. He's like two or three feet away. Yeah, he's, he's usually pretty far back. Yeah. In the pictures. Yeah, but all right. Well, I guess that's a, probably a good, good, complete conversation. The way to end it off is just talking about how tall Zach is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, for everyone listening, this has been Talk Flagler. I am uh, Chris Gollin here with Colin Vieira, Felipe Sanchez, and Wes Richmond of Slaves. Check these guys' music out. We, As we mentioned, they are on everything, even Tidal. So <laughs> if you, I mean, I mean, take it from me. I have been, they're one of those bands, even though I'm buddies with them, I would be a fan if I didn't know any of them. I would be a huge fan. So check these guys out, and uh, thank you guys. For us, you can find us on askflagler.com, your newer news website for Flagler County, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Hit that forward slash askflagler. And if you'd like to be on the podcast, reach out to our email, podcast at askflagler.com. It doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. We want to hear your story. For the askflagler.com team that talk Flagler podcast and our guest slaves, I'm Joey Santos Jones alongside Chris Gollin. Thanks for listening. Wasn't her fault and she knew it Tell me, what kind of man am I supposed to be When the lines are razor blade made are faded Is there really any hope for me If a simple conversation's complicated I know everything I've ever done wrong That kind of memory won't let me move on No, there's bound to be some things that you ain't told me I can never be ashamed of your homie I wouldn't talk to you